Welcome back to TV Movie Mistress. As always, I'm your host, Moji, and I'm back this week to talk episode seven of Four Minutes, um, the sultrier version, according to Aichi. I swear, I don't know why every time I like open up the app, I look at them like the sex sluttier version. <laughs> It's obviously slow, sultry, but this is also the first time I've ever seen them use that tag with any, <laughs> with any BL or anything, honestly. I'm like, what, what was the thought process there? But outside of that, I am here to talk about what can only be described as an intense, intense hour of television, especially when it comes to our boy Tankla, my baby boo. This was as the, with the, as <laughs> with this being the penultimate episode, we are able to see so much more of what makes him this person who's just out here murking people. And we see that his relationship with his father was very much rooted in just domestic violence his dad was like literally putting hands with on him terrible home life his dad kills his cat and in in the delu timeline i would love to keep we see you know he's burying the cat that's how he meets corn and the beginning of their whole love affair but we but with this with this we see just more how tonkla's getting beaten at home his dad kills the cat he, him and his brother Dome, they go to the police and they're like, hey, our dad is <laughs> putting hands on us. And they're like, well, it's a family matter. And that kind of blows my mind when it comes to abuse of like the, within the immediate family. Cause like if you as an adult just went out in the street and started beating a random child that you didn't know, that would be a crime because it's your child. It's not a crime. And it's like, mm, children are not property people are not property but that's another discussion for another day but yeah this intro episode the, the, the cold open does a great job in sort of showing why Tonkla from the get-go has just sort of been like I can't trust these cops these cops aren't gonna do anything because he's grown up in this environment where the cops haven't done anything, they're not there to be helpful. They're more there to sort of sweep the situation under the rug and send you home. And that is very much what we see happening in multiple different stages in this episode as well with the corruption involved in Dome's murder. And of course, Dome's murder is definitely what seems to have been the last Thing that kind of drives Tonkla over the edge. I already said I'm here to forgive my babies for all his rights and his wrongs. I'm still here because this is a traumatized little boy who has lived a terrible life and the, his last anchor, the last person that he has is gone. So he's just like, well, I guess I'm going to have to blow it up like the Joker now. And we see <laughs> moments throughout episode seven where he's behaving like a Joker, especially when we see the stupid black cat just come across his path obviously this is a hallucination he's having related to his childhood when his shitty ass dad killed his cat so throughout this episode every time you see this cat you see Tonkla's brain kind of switch he fully disassociates he disassociates he goes on to then commit horrible crimes whether it's killing title shooting um great whatever and whatever he is just hell bent on revenge at this moment he's no longer in his present day in and day out and it breaks my heart it 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 genuinely breaks my heart that this is happening to him this episode we have we have the reintroduction of the fa f fashion <laughs> this episode we have the reintroduction of the fisherman and his son who bring the recording of great and Tonkler's great and um great entitled shenanigans to the police station the police sees it and just immediately breaks it like you are out of your mind get get out of my police station don't you ever say anything about what you brought me today again this is the police system that tankla 
has grown up with, that Tonkla knows where for the right price, for the right situation, things will be swept under the rug. The father, son, fisherman are chased out of the police station, but eventually Tonkla finds them and the son is like, <laughs> like any young person of today has recorded what was in the dash cam footage onto his phone. Smart, yes. Might cause problems as we see, yes, as well. So with Tonkla seeing this information, he's like, when? When? I need you to do your cop stuff. <laughs> tag in, tag in when? <laughs> when is all in? I don't know if I want to see a four minutes relating to why when is so dedicated. Um, but I would like to know more of his motivation. I don't want like a focus on his backstory as much, but just you are willing to go to places for Tonkla. And it's kind of hilarious, especially because Tonkla is being extra ain't shit this episode. Wynn gets shot defending this footage and Tonkla finds out that he is. And Tonkla's just like, well, did you back it up to the ad cloud? He's not even like, oh, you got shot. It's just like, you dummy, <laughs> did you back it up to the iCloud? Again, we're just sort of seeing how how focused, how hell-bent, how, how lost in the pursuit of revenge Tonkla is at this stage. But when, when it's like, my man, my man, my man, and until I find out if there's any other motivation related to why he is saying, my man, my man, my man, um, I'm, I, I mean, he wants to be a good cop would be the only other option, but that doesn't seem, that doesn't seem, because you're not a good cop, because even in trying to be a quote unquote good cop, you've done a lot of terrible things. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know when. I don't know how I feel about you. It's complicated. Hashtag. Let me know how you guys out there feel. Are there any like when like when is my knight in shining armor? Like, let me know in the comments because I, I I don't know how to categorize when shenanigans in this series from get. But regardless, Tonkla now has a lot of new information, and this new information leads him to realizing that great is. Corn's brother, great is <laughs> his lover's brother. And I feel like this is the moment where if if we had thought Tonkla had reached bottom, we find out he hasn't. Because it's one thing to have been with this man all these years and you're sort of more the giver in the relationship. But now your brother's dead. He comes over for a BJ. He's not there for you. He must be thinking, well, what, what, what have I been doing? <laughs> what have I been giving of self for the past couple of years if at the end of the day your brother kills my brother? Like, what in the Shakespeare insanity is that? And that's when he makes the, I guess, decision, if you can call it a decision, that, well, I guess I'm just going to have to I'm just going to have to kill your brother too. It's just fair. Your brother killed my brother. I'm going to have to kill your brother. We're equals PZ. Is, is that how it works? I don't think so at all. So outside of Tonkla losing his mind throughout this episode, we have great family making the decision we need to get out of town. But they can't find one of their sons. They cannot find great. So they, the parents leave and they're like, Corn, find your brother. Like, wrap things up. We got to go. Uh, <laughs> Tonkla, um, my bad. Corn, unfortunately, dealing with the side of the business, the serious side of the business, does not, he's just, th he just thinks great is missing until he realizes his younger brother has actually, like, been shot in, in the hospital. So things aren't going great for him, per se, between the family activities and his ex-lover at this point and his brother. There's just a lot on his plate. He, there, I, how does it end well for you, sir? How does it end well? I say it doesn't. I say it doesn't. Now let's get to our other handsome, handsome lead this episode. And that, of course, is time. So... 
he he of course at the end of last week's episodes discovers that um great has been shot and he just feels terrible like this the like it's one like they had that argument where <laughs> great was like go ahead and die then and here we are this week and it's like for him it's like oh shoot he's he actually might die like talk about last words last arguments last fight so he is really remorseful he's in the hospital he has a, con- a conversation and this conversation ties back this conversation ties back to the woman who has been coming to see his friend in the hospital and she's like look so and so is the reason why i was able to come out of the state um because if not i would have lost myself i would have died i would not have been able to come out of this coma and what the episode seems to be trying to set up is hopefully time's voice does that for great whether or not it's successful who knows but so time leaves the hospital he goes back home he gets home his apartment is a mess he's like what is this about he immediately picks up the phone facetimes his grandma grandma's like hey buddy i'm good i'm okay next thing you know pow pow grandma's dead most likely um and on his hand he's like oh my god grandma what is happening next thing you know he gets shot he's trying to outrun someone but he gets shot twice y'all twice which i believe sets us up to next week the final episode being um the setup for times four minutes whatever that's gonna look like but as time is shot it seems to also sort of reawaken great i'm sorry it also seems to reawaken time nope no i i got the names all wrong up and down it seems to reawaken great (laughs) and where that's gonna lead is going to be interesting do they both die do they both live what is happening? So our baby Tonkla is out here fully disassociating, committing crimes. Corn has realized his brother's been shot. His brother's um, time is in the hospital regretting and has now gone home. And his grandmama's been shot. He's been shot. Like, there's just problems everywhere. Wind's been shot. You got these old people trying to cover up this illegal operation and the final scene, of course, is a flashback to a young great in time. Surprise, surprise, they knew each other, guys. Um, we get a fuller, we get a fuller fleshing out of the story. Like I said, you know, time you out here reading diaries that your parents who did illegal things wrote i don't know might want to think about that a little bit maybe your parents might have had a hand in it and we see we kind of get confirmation that they went into this um business dealing sort of knowing what would happen to um great's mother as the mistress kind of goes into it hoping to impress her boo essentially tie him to her closer get that elevation to legal wife um fast forward two decades look where that gets her and then you have time's family of course this being their business and i don't know if it's it's something that got out of hand or this was just something they were always doing but it does solidify that great in time knew each other as kids and there's this cute little scene where time protects great from a dog just like he does in you know kind of present day again destiny faith Who knows? Who knows what all of this has been? But we do get confirmation of just how far the inter-family dynamics go. But at the end of the day, time's been shot. Great's in a coma. Tonkla's out here fully disassociating. Corn is running around. (laughs) It's a lot. So what the final episode gives us how that resolves itself i honestly couldn't tell you but i know i am looking forward to it let me know your thoughts in the comments if you are enjoying this coverage please leave a like subscribe to the channel and we'll do this again soon bye guys